great um, year. Um, <clears throat> this is Carrie Wilkins Deming. Um, as you know, she um, this is her second part of a two-part series, and she did the first part last year about the same time. Oh, yeah, and um, she's from Winthrop, and she's going to primarily talk about the Fairbanks heirloom tree, which was um, brought here by Franklin Benjamin, um, I'm sorry, Benjamin Fairbanks in the late 1700s. So no further ado, I'm going to have to care. <laughs> There's a lot of um, references up here. Try to get those organized as I said. So afterwards, for question and answers, um, I am going to pass some things around. I might ask for some participation from the audience once in a while. <laughs> Certain people here. Um, so when our technical person is all set, we're set. We're set. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be in my glasses. Put your clicker. Get your clicker. I've got her clicker. I'll give it to her as soon as I turn this on. I think it's this one. It's on the, on the screen. Yeah. It's and now it's being shared. So the people out there right, can so see it too. Okay. Yes, How we're zooming. The sound? How's the sound, everyone? Very good. Okay. Improvement okay. from? Last year, Hooray. Hooray. you guys, Santa Claus brought us the uh, microphone. Yes. So, um, big thank you to Linda Easterbrooks, tech coach Linda at the Winthrop Workspace. I would like to give her a round of applause because this PowerPoint would not have happened if it wasn't for Linda. And I have her business card. She's right on Main Street. Okay. So, if you grab your brochure that I made. I'm going to first start with an acknowledgement that's very important to me. And um, I want to thank the orchardists, the farmers from the 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, up to the 20th century. It's very important that we recognize how hard orcharding is in farming. It's very hard work. Um, before the settlers came, though, there were the Abenaki in this area, and this is their land in my opinion. And I just wanna honor that because they were here first. So that's the first slide. This is, happens to be in East Winthrop in my backyard, and I'm very fortunate. So this is technically oh, called Mears Stream. And on the other side of Mears, so East Winthrop is on this side, and Reedfield and Manchester are on the other side. It's divided. I am the easternmost eastern corner of East Winthrop, literally. <laughs> okay, so um, a variety of topics tonight. Um, we are concentrating on the Fairbanks apple. And the rich uh, Pete here um, met him a while ago. I don't actually remember how I uh, met you originally, Pete. Um, when I started Apple Research, um, first of all, let me back up a second. I'm a registered nurse full time with hospice with me in general. That's my primary job, full time mom. And um, I was very fortunate to grow up on a self sustaining organic farm in Litchfield, Maine. So thanks, mom and dad. Hard work. I remember uh, hauling water, hot water to pigs in the middle of winter at six in the morning before school. My brothers, my brothers and I and my sister begrudgingly um, did that and uh, splitting and stacking wood. But years later, we look back and we're really, really grateful for those experiences. So grew up um, picking apples in um, Monmouth at Chick's Orchards and ate apples until my stomach hurt. <laughs> I think we've all had that experience. Was always very curious about apples and their names. And a particular apple in particular um, was the Northern Spy, my very favorite apple of all time. Mark, I'm going to have this, Mark's with yes, so I have to go pick some um, apples at Mark's. And 
I started volunteering at Common Ground Fair many, many years ago and met a gentleman by the name of John Bunker. You will see a photo of him later. And I call him the Apple Whisperer of Maine. He's an Apple historian. Um, when you work at Common Ground Fair, I'm usually there anywhere from Wednesday or Thursday night to Sunday. When you work at the fair, you don't get a lot of time to actually see the fair and um, as a volunteer. And the one thing that I always would do was make sure that I had a, a chance to go see John Bunker at the Fedco tree and seed area and listen to one of his talks. So being curious about the naming of the Northern Spy and how it got its name, um, another cohort of mine, Todd Little Siebold, we realized years later, we were both kind of semi-stalking bon John Bunker. And after his talks, um, I would track him down. And year after year after year, I would talk to him about the Northern Spy. He'd share information. Um, and after 10 or so years of doing this, once only once a year, he looked at me and he said, I don't, you know, we never have time for chit chat. Are you from Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire? And I said, I'm from Winthrop, Maine. <laughs> and he said, well, Winthrop, Maine was the mecca of apple production and apple exportation. And more varieties of apples were um, found and made, produced in Winthrop than any town or city in the state of Maine in the 1800s. Orchardists is um, blocked to Winthrop because of the soil. And the Winthrop Center Road in particular, um, I have started making a map, which you will see at the very end, it's very crude. <clears throat> and one by one by one have discovered all the different orchards. There's still some that are uh, I have not figured out yet. I have actually started knocking on people's doors. Fortunately, I made a business card so that they don't think I'm selling something <laughs> and slam the door in my face. Um, but, you know, John Bunker was that inspiration of being an Apple detective. And um, I can't hold a candle to him, but I'm trying. So he's passing the torch to, to many other people. So Mary Richards and I were um, on a committee together called Winthrop Unites. And our little group would meet and I would chit chat about my Apple adventures. And she asked me to do a talk last year. So I started researching and just never stopped. Mm -hmm. um, I'm already working on part three if you want me back. Um, <laughs> there's there's just so much um, so much out there and it's wonderful. So in that whole segue, I found out that Pete and Mary have a Fairbanks tree. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very rare. It's um, an heirloom. And the um, Heritage Orchard had taken scions about 10 years ago, Pete, eight, 10 years ago. As to my recollection, the new folks didn't take the first one. Is that was the first plan to get much attention? John Walker actually took some years no, ago. Well, yeah, it was when Pete John did. came. Right, Pete, right. So, yeah. so um, let me just start the slides, and and we'll we'll reference a little bit more details on that. So, all right, let's see if this works. Right or left, Linda? Pick one. Left. <laughs> To get the wrong yeah, stone in the way. The other I, I did. The other left. <laughs> I'm, you must have the wrong, the, the wrong uh, situation. Because it was working this afternoon. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, here we there go. We there we go. go. Right. You got it. I'm, I'm rolling it. Okay. Rolling. Okay. Oh, that's right. Rolling. So, rolling. so how's about them apples, Linda? Um, there are a few little uh, photos here and there that I've just thrown in there. Um, there, the Homological Society of Winthrop, uh, the state of Maine, um, met here at the Old Town Hall many, uh, many, many times throughout the years. <clears throat> this is a picture of John Bunker and Francis Fenton. And uh, this is a long, long time ago. John is the mentor that I, I mentioned. This is how I research. Um, <laughs> I collect books. Um, I track down a really old, rare book um, in Portland. And it was actually in the library of, from Cincinnati, Ohio. Mr. Uh, Mr. Ron Clay and I um, took a look at that earlier. So, and it was a history of Winthrop ended up in, in Cincinnati, Ohio. Another picture of um, John Bunker and another lovely lady and someone by the name Betsy Steen, who um, I knew long ago. Some of you might recognize this gentleman, Mr. Bob Pelletier. 
So Bob came to the talk last year. He was actually the superintendent of schools at Oak Hill High School when I graduated many years ago. And um, I uh, came to the town hall to borrow this photo, which is right here. And you can look at it afterwards. Um, if you, It's really hard to see, but on this side is an old orchard. And that's Moran folk. And that is... Um, Help me out here. The body of water in a bus cover. Okay. Right. And <laughs> way, way, way over was another orchard called the Woodman Orchard. So I'm tracking down slowly all the different areas of um, different orchards. So when I came to the town office to see if I could borrow this, Mr. Pelletier was walking in and he says, oh, well, I have a larger one down at um, Pat Ladd's Realty. So he brought me down. And he said, oh, I have a file for you because when I came to your talk last year, I started taking notes. So he just handed me um, a file folder of different notes that he'd been taking since last year. Um, and, and that's what I need. You know, if anyone here has information, you know, grandma's old orchard, where the favorite tree was, see me afterwards and um, we can exchange some information. This is just something cool that I found at the um, Highmore farm. It was, um, someone took an apple and pressed it. Um, I actually would like to know what that's called, if anyone knows is artistic here. <laughs> uh, but we don't know what kind of, oh, it's this king or something. But we're not sure. Anyway, so here's the Fairbanks tree. And this is Laura Seeger. Uh, Laura oversees the Heritage Orchard and Unity. And a group of us went out to take a look at the Fairbanks tree. We actually took some scions. <laughs> so. It's and I'll explain that in a second. Oh wait, that's not the nope. That's the point. Okay, here's the Fairbanks tree. This was another tree of interest that we that we. That's took another look at. tree we have that right. hasn't right. been named yet. So this is the Fairbanks tree. So Laura and I and Zach and Pete and Dr. Larry Bougie, Bougie. I say Bougie. Um, he was the veterinarian in Monmouth for, for a very long time. He's also part of the Monmouth. Apple Museum? The, his, the Historical Society, at least. Okay. So we all went out um, to take a look at the tree. Uh, this is Laura taking scions because when John Bunker came eight to ten years ago, they took scions that uh, engrafted onto other trees, and they had viable Fairbanks trees, and unfortunately with the drought, they died. Uh, so they are, um, have taken scions and... These ones also didn't take, so we're going to have to do it again. Oh a few other people took scions. I'm not sure if any if anyone's took. Mine did not. So we'll give it another go in the spring. Well, this is Laura here. So um, we are slowly. Um, this is this is early spring, so you don't see how much overgrowth there is, but there's a lot of um, invasive species around this tree. So we're slowly cleaning it our uh, cleaning out. When we were all there looking at the tree, Zach from Absalom Cidery noticed that the power lines go right over the tree. Mm -hmm. And then we started realizing that all these limbs here, Central Main Power had been contracting people and they were cutting the tree. So I called C CMP, they listened. I ended up calling who they contracted, a tree company local. And then I ended up calling Chinbro. And all three were very receptive. They are actually moving the power lines um, off the tree and they're not limbing it anymore. So, yes. <laughs> so the spring before there were a few apples, but the drought, they all dropped. This is this year. So uh, the, the, the side that we cleaned off the most um, has a lot of apples. And in fact, the apple pie that I brought tonight has Fairbanks apples in it. <laughs> And there they are, Fairbanks apples. So I'm going to pass them around. You can take a look. Um, these have not been treated. Um, we are going to start pruning this tree. They have not been sprayed. And I just wanted you, the, the apple that's cut in half, take a look at that. When I made my apple pie this morning, I didn't have to cut any worms out. I mean, there are a few here and there. There's spots on the apples, but give me the verse oh, message, right? right? How old is it? It's very old. I'm going to read you something about this tree. Hmm. 
and it tastes delicious. Feel free to, I have a whole bunch if you would like to, to try one, go right ahead. So the whole reason um, the tree got discovered is because John Bunker put up a wanted poster and that's right on the front of your brochure. It, what John Bunker would do is he would, um, at, at uh, Mafia events, at Common Ground Fair, and, and other Apple Talks, he would put up a poster and say, I'm looking for the Ben Davis, or I'm looking up for the, the Fairbanks, and he's and Mary's daughter, noticed, yeah. and noticed the, um, the little wanted poster and said, Dad, I think we have one of those. So John Bunker was very, very excited. Um, so, as it says here, Elijah Fairbanks was born in 1756. He died at age 97 in 1853. He was almost as old as Francis Fenton, and that's a that's a whole other talk. Um, he was the gentleman in the photo with John Bunker, the first one. He planted an apple tree that bears his name on June 9, 1779. Let me say that again. June 9th, 1779. So do the math. Who's good at math? <laughs> 2023 minus 1779 equals? 245. 245? Because it's eight years after Winthrop was found. Okay. And Winthrop is now 253 if you like. I was thinking 245 or 247. So those those apples that you're looking at, those apples that you're looking at is from a tree that's 245 years old. How amazing is that, folks? How it's amazing crazy. is that? It's, crazy. it's right in the middle of the pasture. So there, there's something significant about the date of June 9th, 1779. Is there any history buffs here? Anyone? Does it ring a bell? June 9, 1779 is the day that General Francis McLean and the British Royal Navy attacked and occupied Castine at the mouth of the Kennebec River. Significant day. <laughs> Significant. And he was planning it. So they, they don't know if he did that on purpose. I mean, if you think of how communication happened back then, I don't know how he would have known that that happened. So I, I think it's a complete coincidence, but someone figured that out. Hmm. So as the story goes, Daniel Allen Fairbanks, um, who was the grandson of one of the Fairbanks, um, said that the native tree was killed by hogs, which were kept in the orchard and stripped the bark. There were several trees of the Fairbanks variety in the town, and they engrafted this variety, the, De the Deacon Williams, helped to engraft some of these trees. And uh, the grandson went on to say, every person who knows this apple values them highly. Hmm. So the, the fact that you see this apple, yes, it has the spots and everything. It hasn't, it hasn't been, as I said, no, no one has pruned it, no one's taken care of it. The, the skin is amazing. And so this is why people like Morris Toll, who lived on the Winthrop Center Road, John Bunker. That's why it's so important to keep this tree alive. Not just because it's 245 years old. It probably has vitamin content that's amazing. It doesn't bruise easily. It's good for packing. It tastes delicious. And um, it's an old heirloom variety. So it's really important to try to keep this alive. So uh, we are going to um, take more science, as I said, and graft to try to, to keep this alive. Because we don't know what's going to happen to this tree. It's lasted all these years. Why? We don't know. Is there something special about this tree that has kept it alive? And is this something like we're going to bring to Mars someday because it, you know, it, <laughs> it survived so well all these years? Is there something about this tree um, that, that makes it survive more than others? Um, orcharding is hard work. From the 1700s, the 1800s, and the 1900s, there's been two major freezes that decimated apple orchards in the whole country, in, the, in, in New England and in Maine, to the point that orcharding, some people stopped planting orchards because their all their orchards were, uh, their trees um, froze and burst. The trees actually exploded. Um, and that second time that the big freeze happened, that's when you started seeing a lot of these heirlooms disappear. People wanted apple trees like the Macintosh, 
that would produce hot, you know, high mass um, apples that tasted delicious, that were pretty. A lot of the heirloom um, apples don't have that, you know, that beautiful luster. And let me stay on task here because I swag segue a lot. So we'll go back to some more details. Um, I had a, a, a friend who made a, a little sign um, when we were trying to get a hold of CMP and Chinbro and everybody. Um, he put this, he made this little sign for me. We'd like to eventually put a proper tag on the tree of significance. And um, rumor has it there might be an event at um, Absalom Cidery in which we'll pass the tip jar around to raise funds to get a proper um, tag for the tree. This is the poor farm, which was the Fairbanks farm. And that's where Pete and Mary Richards live today. Oops. This is, um, is it a watering trough, Pete? Watering trough. Um, I don't know, if we should really do a, um, a little scavenger hunt of all the different icons in Winthrop. There's some really amazing <laughs> um, watering troughs of significance, um, little signs. I just, someone just showed me, um, there's a plaque, um, not the one that's on the road, what's the one that offshoots? South Street. Um, South, road. South Road. There's a plaque that um, commemorates where Timothy Foster's home was. And he, Timothy Foster was one of the first settlers here in Winthrop. Um, it's kind of hidden in the bushes along the stone wall. And I think it's right next to... Um, Birchwood. To what? Birchwood. Birchwood, right. Dr. Simbronowitz's house. That's how I know it. Okay. Moving along. So if you look at this uh, cutting here, um, there's lots of different ways to identify a particular apple. The reason I did this is to show the oxidization. The oxidation. Oh, oxidation, <laughs> thank you. Um, one of the things that commercial orchardists, they want an apple that doesn't um, do this. Mm -hmm. And this is a sign that this is an heirloom when you see this, um, this process. So, this is what I want to see when I eat an apple. I don't want it to, to look pretty. This is just a cool picture. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate that I live in the back of Lakeside Orchard, so I walk here a lot. I just thought it was really cool that there's this rock growing um, in that tree. Um, I'm fortunate to walk all year round in Lakeside, walking, snowshoeing, and, and uh, skiing. Moving right along, this is... Mr. Mark Griswold, and I'm going to let him stand up just for a second, if that's okay, and introduce himself. <laughs> and Mark planted how many trees? Uh, 820. Wow. Okay. Dwarf trees, little guys. So this is the only pick your own apple orchard in Winthrop, folks. And so please check them out. They're right on Route 202. Mark started as a flower farm, correct? Um, your own? I, we did we did flowers and apples at the same okay. time, but the flowers were ready to pick before the apples. And... So um, I'm really, really happy that um, there's orcharding again in Winthrop. Um, there are a lot of old abandoned orchards or people who have farms or orchards on their own property. And we'll talk about that a, a little bit. Um, this is the future of Winthrop apples right here, folks. Um, this is a, a photo I just took recently of some, I believe these are collar reds, I'm pretty sure, um, of which the winning apple pie was made with collar reds tonight. This is Mark. Um, I went to interview him and introduce myself when I found out that he had apples. Are you planting more by chance? I don't. I think I'm done with that. Yeah, that's a yeah. lot. 820 trees is a lot. That's a lot of work. We have 60 peach trees. I may plant another row of peaches. Mm, wonderful. Uh, How are they doing? They're doing great, except for this year. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no peaches <laughs> in Maine this year because of the freeze, but so mm -hmm. the trees are healthy. Right. Yeah. So orcharding, um, you have to worry about pests. Mm -hmm. You have to worry about weather. You have to prune them. Um, when your fruit drops, you should always pull the fruit away, whatever you don't use for drops, because it just increases infestation of bugs. And then you're dealing with blight and you're dealing with funguses. It's hard work. So um, when you go and pick your apples or your peaches, um, make sure that you thank your orchardist. 
Yeah, there it is, the Paula Red. And I love this picture. Mark shared that with me. This is when they first planted all their trees. Um, who was that with you, Mark? Uh, my friends, Jeffrey and Karen. Yeah, they, they helped a lot. They helped plant the trees? Job. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, plus another seven or eight friends. Wonderful. That's, and they're, that's they're actually watch. still my friends now. I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a that's a great shot. So please please do check them out. This is a picture of the Clement Farm, and so this is one of my um, on the on the Winthrop Center Road. They have two or three trees that are still bearing fruit. Um, this is anyone know what this is? It's a stencil for a barrel, and this is an original stencil from the Clement Farm. <laughs> and um, one of the descendants, Lori Lee, who was on the Case Road, let me borrow this. I can't let anyone else touch it. <laughs> um, it I believe it's made out of copper. So there were two Clements. Um, this is right on the corner of Narrows Pond and, and Winthrop one, Center Road. Winthrop Center Road. <laughs> so if you're going to bang a, a right onto Narrows, it's, it's right there. It's a, a large barn. I just took a picture of the back of it because it looks more old. Um, so, where I put my glasses? Oh, right there. Um, there were two Clement brothers. So Walter Clement was Lori's grandfather, owned Clement's Market in West Broxbury, Massachusetts. The Elms was their farm in Maine and they sent produce to Massachusetts. This copper stencil was covered with black paint when my great aunt Ruth gave it to me early in my marriage. I have no idea what kind of apples the farm grew. All the trees are long gone, and actually that's not true. There's a few there. The houses in attached barn are all that's left, and so it's on 135 South and the nearest pond road. So what, what else she shared with me is that there were paddle boats on the Kennebec, and they had their own barrels, and they would mark um, the stencil. This says, minimum volume three bushels, unclassified. Packed by W.A. Clement, The Elms, Winthrop, Maine. So I, I'll get a picture of that later and maybe we can archive that. Uh, but they would send the uh, apples down the Kennebec all the way down to Boston mm -hmm. and sell them at a fruit market. So, okay, let's see. Uh, when I went to the climate farm, um, these are some of the apples I found. There's some crowds there, and there's some very strange fruit <laughs> up in the in the left. I'm not sure what that is. Um, I'd like to go back and, and look at it again. If anyone here has any clue at all. No idea. What, what, the, what the texture is? What is, what, I don't just want to say pop loss. I have one at home and I'll bring it to you. It's maybe, maybe a pop up? I don't know. It's, it's interesting. So, but that just goes to show, um, you know, orchardists didn't plant just apples. They, they planted pears and grapes and peaches and all kinds of, of different things. And so I, I'd love to try to figure out what that what that is. And if it is, I, I have a feeling it is indeed um, original to the farm. Uh, more apples. Um, when you're identifying a, a particular kind of apple, if you have apple trees, um, we look at, we cut it in half, we take a look at the top, we look, took a look, a look at the bottom. We also look at the tree itself. Was it grafted or is it a seedling? Does anyone know the difference between a seedling and a grafted apple tree? Would you care to speak up? Well, the graft it can be on any root stock. Correct. And the seedling is chance seedling. Right. Yeah, chance. Right. So this here is a Winthrop greening from the Morris Toll Orchard on the Winthrop Center Road. Morris Toll um, had a lot of old varieties and he passed them on to Wit at Wit's Orchard on the Case Road. If you took a seed from this apple, it would not grow a Winthrop greening. Does everyone understand that? Okay. To get a winter greening, you have to take a scion and graft it onto another tree. 
apples are just like you and I. They have similar DNA patterns. We don't make the same child every time unless it's twins or, or triplets. Um, so if a chance seedling is if this fell on the ground or you know a deer ate it and carried it off and a tree grew, it would be its own tree. You can name it whatever you want. It would not be able to breathe. Mm -hmm. So I can uh, pass some of these around. Um, this is uh, currently Derek um, Glazier and his wife Bridget own the Morris Toll um, Orchard, very, very old orchard. I'm not sure you can talk about I'll mention that after. I'm going to try not to segue too, too much, and we'll, we'll talk about that at the very end. This, uh, these are russets, and this is from Witt's Orchard. Uh, Witt's Orchard, if you see on your brochure the picture of all the children. So a family now owns that. It was kind of exciter at one time. And uh, another family took it over, the Kennebec uh, Cider. There were two different families that owned Kennebec Cider, and their families grew and grew. And so and now another family is there. Um, and they are uh, collaborating with some local cideries. So this picture here, I actually don't know what kind of apple this is. Um, I know Zach has been to this particular orchard, to Witt's Old Orchard. One of the reasons I showed the picture is because of the red color. Um, they, they have a blind kiss, which is a red flesh apple, which was commonly grown in one row. Um, they also have, uh, I don't know how to say it, but it's a Russian apple pie that's also... Red astrakhan? Uh, no, it's no. like a Nita Sala or something. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's also a red flesh apple. It was originally grown in Russia. It was also brought but it also creates a red color through, which also makes red juice. So you can use it for wine. So this is just another picture of just, you know, different varieties. I believe that is the smaller one is the Dalgo. Yeah, they yes. Got, they got multiple different patterns. Mm -hmm. What would you, uh, how, how would you describe the Dalgo, Zach? So those are a uh, super tart uh, crab apple that were meant for jelly because they really set well when you eat jelly. Um, they're high acid content a lot of those kind of set well with sugar and still hold in flavor. So that's kind of originally what all of us So they're great for balancing ciders, correct? Ciders, jams, and pies. So the apple pie I made tonight had russets from East Winthrop. Doggos from East Winthrop and the Fairbanks apple. All from Winthrop orchards. And here we have <laughs> Absalom cider. And I was going to see if Zach would actually just stand up for a second. <laughs> Thank you, Zach, for coming. Thanks for they, they've all <laughs> So, um, Zach, I'll, I'll, I'll let you take it away with introducing your crew here. That's okay with you. So, yeah, that's my business partner, Kevin, on my left side. Um, we have my business partner, Ryan. Um, Kevin's a true Mainer. He's been here his whole life, but grew up in Falmouth. And uh, I'm a transplant from New Jersey, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, my business partner, Ryan's from Maryland, but um, all kind of love coming up to Maine and wanted to settle here to start a uh, fermentation business. So found, uh, found this amazing barn that uh, the attorney family owned and uh, purchased from them and then I've turned it into, uh, so we manufacture cider, hard cider on, on the property. We have 60 acres and we're planting 120 apple trees. This is some of their product, you can pass it around. So yeah, we make hard cider and maybe someday fresh cider as well um, for sale. And, uh, yeah. Let's get it started. Um, only only been open for a year and a half, so still still early days. But but wonderful product. They have a lovely dry ciders. They also have fruit trucks. And they also have beer and wine um, available too if, if you're not a cider person. So and they have about a hundred and fifty thousand chickens. Yeah. They can try <laughs> running around <laughs> over over hundred and fifty chickens of different varieties. You can buy eggs. Right. I knew I knew you, but you're out of your element. I, I know. <laughs> so, so, so the cider industry is taking off. Um, Maine is known for their craft beers, and uh, Maine is finally getting recognized for um, cider. So speaking of cider, cider's been around a really long time. 
I'm going to read a little something out of a history book of Winthrop. And this is the history of Winthrop from 1764 to October 1855 by David Thurston. And it says here, the first cider made in the town was from the orchard of Mr. Ichabod Howe on the place now occupied by Mr. Moses Hansen and Mr. John Stanley. They had neither cider, mill, nor press, but thirsting for a beverage to which they were formerly accustomed as almost one of the necessaries of life, <laughs> but had been now for a long time without. With true Yankee ingenuity, they pounded a quantity of apples in a sap trough and extracted the juice in a cheese press. In this way, they obtained a few gallons, all the neighbors, and in parentheses it says, and that included a long distance, were invited to come and partake of it as a rare luxury. Since the temperance and reformation has led men to quit drinking cider so generally, very little has been made to use as a beverage. And it, it goes on and on. So um, the temperance um, era um, was significant in Maine at one time. So there were many um, people who finally did have their cider mill um, in the basement or the barn um, under the cover of night. <laughs> All right. Let's see what the next slide says. I think it's more, yeah. Okay, I snuck in and took a picture of some of the back of barrels. So a lot of hard work, folks. They have, um, how many different ciders do you have right now? 23 different ones right now. Wow. But That's, I'm always making more. Right. So 23 different kinds that you can get. So hop on over Friday night, folks. Saturday, <laughs> Sunday. Actually, are you guys going to be open in the hurricane? We'll be open Friday and Sunday this week. We have a wedding on Saturday. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh no. So go on, go on over Friday or Sunday. That's when the hurricane is coming. Um, this is oh, this is that sequence, but this is the old Wits Orchard. Oh. Um, yeah. And this <laughs> here is the future, folks. <laughs> um, these are children that um are in the neighborhood at Wits Old Orchard. And I took a picture of them last year. And actually, Sarah's here, one of the neighborhood children. She's oh, there she yeah. is. The, the uh, youth group got, uh, uh, got together at uh, Stephen's house at Woods Porter and had a cider press with the kids. And then he had glass. So they pressed their own fresh cider of all the apples from Woods Orchard. And do you, any idea how many gallons you made? Oh, my goodness. No, everybody took away the kids. She's got plenty of money. So gallons and gallons. <laughs> yes. All right. So this is my very crude map. <laughs> this is the next talk book. It's a good one. Literally, very crude. <laughs> so as you can see, I start up at Absalom. Um, so where uh, Absalom Cidery is, it was called the Fox Farm. And when Ryan and Kevin and Zach decided to move to Maine, they randomly picked this particular farm for many, many reasons not realizing that the entire Winthrop Center Road was all orchardists. <laughs> so from Absalom down, um, there's the Clark Farm, there's the Bailey Manor, and um, which was uh, Littman's later, where they grew Paula Reds, mm -hmm. and all those are, trees are gone now. It's um, solar panels. Um, I do believe there might be a couple of trees hiding way, way, way over. I'm going to knock on that person's door and see if they'll let me go in their backfield. Uh, you keep going down. Um, but before you get to Morris Toll, um, there is something called Rosewood. Anyone know what Rosewood is? If you do, let's talk after. There's some very old, interesting trees there. Um, I did knock on their door. They looked at me kind of funny, but um, they did call me back. So I have to go interview them. Um, and then you have Morris Toll, and you keep going down. Uh, I'd like to know where the East Winthrop line is, if anyone knows that. <laughs> um, but all up and down, there, there are also some, some chance seedlings. Um, I found some crabs. Um, if, if you go across 202 on the Old Village Road, there's two very old apple trees um, on the left-hand side if you're headed towards the Case Road. Mm -hmm. And um, they were marked with pink tape, and I actually took the tape down. 
um, trying to save them. I need to find out who the who uh, owns the property because I'd like to try to make sure that they don't get um, cut down. So I pulled the tape off twice. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> so far, they're, they're still standing and all the other trees have been cut down. Um, and then there's Wits Orchard, which was Canada X Cider. Somewhere, but just by chance, someone told me that at mailbox 641 on Winthrop Center Road, there was the Taylor Witham Orchard, so I need to find out more about that. That's that's the one with the trophies. With the trophies? Oh, oh, did that come up? The no, trophy? but oh, okay. I can't right. get. All right, afterwards we'll show you a really cool trophy. Um, and then there's Juniper Hill, um, and their their trees are are very young, um, but some very delicious um, apples. I've made cider out of them. Uh, many times. I collect apples all up and down um, Old Village Road and the Case Road and make an East Winthrop blend. I've made the nice sweet <laughs> cider. I've made a hard cider that turned to vinegar, which is still good and viable for cooking. And um, last year I was very successful in making a sicer, um, which is made with honey instead of sugar. And it actually turned out pretty good. I was really happy with it. Um, there's an old farmstead on the Case Road, but there's no, um, no apple trees there except for one that's planted, and um, that's Wendy's house. And someone grafted like three or four different varieties on that one tree. It's, it's a young tree, um, but I need to go back and, and take a look at that to see if that's still viable. And then on Wyman Farm Lane, where I live, um, on top of the hill, if you uh, when you turn onto Wyman Farm Lane and go all the way down into the valley, the Wyman Farm um, was a uh, central main power company. Um, that was the original, that was their farm, the people who started central main power company. It was the Wyman family. Mm -hmm. So there is one chance seedling apple tree on my property. Mm -hmm. It's very tall and I've been trying to um, take care of it a little bit. Little tiny apples that the deer love. Mm -hmm. So um, my budding orchard, I haven't produced any fruit yet, but I'm hoping that maybe next year I'll have a few that are ready to bear fruit. So um, I'm hoping to have a really nice map for the next talk. <laughs> and this is um, just a lovely photo that I took um, in Lakeside Orchards. So that is it for the presentation. If there's some questions and answers, I can do my best. Um, and I, I wanted to first say, I forgot to say this part. I'm not an expert. I'm an enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right there. So feel free to come on up um, if you uh, want to look through some of my research. Little oh, science oh, science. Oh. Um, actually, I think Zach can actually scientifically say that better than I can. Do you mind coming on up here, Zach? Yes. Science or just like cutting scrub. Oh, here it is. Right here. Basically, new oh, trees are marked by this one that I can see. Yeah, there's new growth on trees that you can cut off and basically Frankenstein, put them onto other trees yeah, by not. grafting them on. And that's how you transcend this tree to keep these varieties going. Somebody's had it. Somebody Where? Human am, I? Had no, no. am I in Zoom or? You know, grafting yeah. this tree onto another tree. So that's, mm, that's not a cool concept. Yeah. That's all these new deaths. Someone has been done that. Yeah, no, the good part about, yeah, yeah, about okay. these brains is on the on trees <laughs> is you can see the rootstock that works can well. You zoom in on the, the climate and the soil that you have, that and then the varieties are all the varieties grafted onto that. Color red or you know, if you do better or whatever. So if you have a working root stock, you won't go too high. Share the nap on the Share the nap on the For me, when I bought trees, I, I had, you know, orchards who were really good at it, made the trees even more interesting. Except this is all over to see the school. I need a copy of that. This is 1930s. It's the 1980s. Oh, in 2013. Helen, that's a good photograph. I thought you might. Thank you. Yeah, I will in just a sec. Um, so, just to, to segue on to the, the scions, um, one thing I didn't mention is um, identifying apples. As I mentioned, um, there's a lot of different ways that we identify an apple. Um, we can now test the DNA of apples. It's super cool. 
we gather leaves. Um, springtime is the best, and we send them to um, a place. I don't, I, I'm not remembering where it is, but we can literally figure out the DNA and the parentage of apple trees, just like you do DNA testing with humans. So I'd love to um, bring some of our folks, our team, to the Fairbanks in the spring and grab some leaves and test it. We can find out for parents of the, of the Fairbanks and we can actually 100% confirm that the Fairbanks were, were probably like 97% certain. The other thing we can do is um, people who wanna know how old their tree is to prove it, you can do a coring and um, find out how, much, how old it is. Um, once we really 100% know if a tree, what a tree is, there's something called Regis tree in North America. And we map, we um, mark the tree on a map. So the state of Maine right now, <laughs> any tree that's been identified, um, we mark it on a particular map. We take coordinates. So we're going to be actually adding the Fairbanks um, to the Regis tree mapping. So referencing, does anyone, anyone know this poster? No. Yeah. Okay. Once DNA started being tested, John Bunker made this poster. It's amazing. It's one of my favorites. So we have figured out three or four of these apples are not what they said they were. So. <laughs> um, and some of them, I can't remember which ones in particular, but um, we're actually thrilled. <laughs> um, and we're trying to, to um, I think one of them is the Dudley Winter. I could be wrong on that. But there's three or four of these are not what we thought they were when they were identified. And that's okay. It's a mystery but um, we'll try to figure it out, so. Okay, another question. I have two. Yes. First, as you're going on with the center road, you're hitting 202. Yes. I noticed there's a, there's a house in the back, but all in front of the house is all these apple trees. Right. Do you know what kind of apples are here? I do not. That is actually part of the more, there's two, if it's what I'm thinking of, um, the Morris Toll Orchard is both of those properties, but the property was split. And there's two separate homeowners, and they each orchard differently, is what I'm going to say. Is that something you can find out? No. I actually do have a map mm -hmm. of the orchard. I just don't remember what they are. The second question yes. is, we're in Lower Narrows Pond. When my wife was a little girl, she said, across the way on the causeway, it was a, it was a big apple <laughs> orchard. Um, is there any way with history, either the photograph, I mean, we're going to go with that property with 60. I will track it down. Any way to find out what kind of apple it would have been thrown. I will track it down. Um, see me after. The, yeah, anyone who has any reference or is something interesting, I'm going to get a piece of paper and just put your name and address and phone number, uh, email address. And um, it's going to take me about 10 years, folks, to get through this. <laughs> I'm hopefully eventually going to write a book about all of this research. Um, a pamphlet, a book, we'll see. That's my, that's my end goal. People who live there now were there at least... Okay, so you already know something about what their kid was in Sarah's class. Okay, yeah, it's a long time ago. There's, <laughs> there's John, yeah, there's lots of different ways of tracking things down. Um, at last year's talk, two or three people came up to me and said, Oh, I have this information and this information and this information. So there's a lot of stuff I didn't even mention tonight, folks, um, which is why I'm hopefully eventually going to be writing a book. So good. Any other um, questions? Yes. I just wanted to follow up on two things. You sort of mentioned the science that um, Perry was mentioning. Another Maine Organic Farmers and Gardeners event is every spring there's a science exchange. And it's not just apple trees, but people can bring cuttings from your trees and swap them with other people who might want um, to graph your um, one on yours and you can pick up theirs. So it's a really fun event and they do other things. The right. Day. And then Perry mentioned, and you might talk about it, more of the Heritage Richard at Sanka. And I just want to let people know that that was a project, um, John Booker and several other people I was on the board at Hawk and then said, we want to really reclaim all of these main um, heirloom apples. And originally, I hundred different varieties. Um, so we can come up to Unity at the fair or common ground or other times of the year. There are these um, heirloom apples, Laura, who the Terry showed. On there, you know, those ones may have not made it originally, but most of them they've really gotten to do wonderfully. They reclaimed an old um, gravel pit that right. it was in a horrible shape, and they worked um, 
with the Army Corps of Engineers and other people who say this is not being used, but we could turn it into this heritage orchard and have that common ground there of course of both that heritage orchard and two other big apple spots on the top of Probably say more about all that and all exciting stuff. It, 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 it is a lot of the varieties that Carrie yeah. just mentioned. Are there. Yeah. Go, going back to the window center road for a, for a sec, um, you know, all these orchards that I'm discovering, old ones and some that we do know of, all these orchards in, you know, 1700s, they started settling, 1800s is when the big boom was. Um, the soil was, ex it was exceptional here, and that's why they started coming here. The whole of Winthrop Center Road, and then and it's spread all over town. There's orchards everywhere, that, but I'm concentrating um, on Winthrop Center Road and um East Winthrop for right now, these orchardists shared science. They shared, um, you know, what mm -hmm. apple tree bore fruit, which one didn't bruise, which one tasted good, which was a taster, which was a spitter. Anyone know what that means? <laughs> taster and a spitter? <laughs> a taster is something that's delicious and the spitter is something you spit out, but the spitters are important because they help balance hard cider. So um, just a wealth of orchardists um, and just rediscovering um, all these orchards a lot of the trees aren't there. Some of them are. Some of them are um, are um, coming back to life because of the chance seedlings. So very exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. So people on um, Zoom wanted to see your handles. Oh, okay. There are. Still there. Yeah. Still there. How do you do that? You just do it and okay. Um, oh, and there's I'll, I'll try it. Yeah, so this is a russet, and I actually don't know what kind of russet. I'm not sure if Zach might know. Where do I go with this? You have to go up. Okay. Uh, well, Tell me when. This is hard to do when I'm doing it. There you go. These are russets from which orchard? And you can't really this see them. Can you come browse? Do you want to just close this? Bring them over to me. Yes. Okay. And I, that way I don't have to go back and forth. Thank you. One more time. Yeah. They now carry. Okay. You tip it, they'll be able right. to see. So these are russets from Wits Orchard right here. They're delicious. It's almost like a pear apple. What, what, how would you describe it, Zach? A russet. I think that's gray pear. I think it's gray pear. Gray pear It's it's absolutely delicious. It was in my apple pie. Thank you. These are Paula reds. I actually got the these in up north near Burnham, uh, but I was excited to find them. You don't see them all the time. But Paula reds were grown in the Lipman orchard, which was formerly Bailey Manor. Oop. There we okay. go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Um, and I happen to know someone, she's 80 something. She was the field boss at Littman's Orchards. And um, back, M Mr. Littman um, hired her as the field boss because she like he liked how she worked with, um, you know, being the boss. And a few of the men were not really happy about it. And Mr. <laughs> Littman said, if you're not happy with her being the field boss, then you can just walk out the door. So he really stood up for her. All right, there's that one. This is the Fairbanks. This is the one that's 245 years old, folks, right here. Absolutely delicious. Not the apple. The, right. <laughs> but the fact that a tree that's 245 years old still bears apples and was part of my apple pie tonight, my apple crumble. Um, this is not this is not from Winthrop, but it's just super cool. It is a wolf river. And this is one of the smaller ones. Okay, there we go. This is one of the smaller ones. That's a small one. This is, th <laughs> their wolf rivers are, are huge. This is half the size. Oh, oh wow. God. Yes. Where do you buy them? You don't buy them. <laughs> That's well, just well, them. They're an heirloom. It could, yeah. Yes, that's, you that's can. The, that's the, the, the tale is that a uh, one wolf river can make one apple pie. Correct, yeah. correct. So it's, yep. Wow. Um, I just happen to, as a hospice nurse, I, um, whenever I'm washing my hands at the kitchen sink and looking out the window, <laughs> if I spy an apple tree, I ask them and I noticed this one right away and I was like, wow. And so um, they let me pick a whole bunch of these wolf rivers. So this is actually from Pittston. Doesn't Bailey Lodge should have those? I would have to find I out. So. I really don't know. That would be great if they did, because you, you don't buy them very often. Okay, these are the Dalgos. This is also from Wits Orchard, and I'm pretty sure the Dalgos are also in the Morris Toll Orchard. I, I'm actually, those might not be Dalgos. Uh-oh. The plate are. says it is. 
Thank you. It might be Kerr Crabb. <laughs> Can you spell that? K E R L. Oh, okay. Kerr Crabb. Oh, did you pick all the Dalgos, Zach? No, I didn't pick all. Okay. You can never pick all. Okay. <laughs> so, my apologies if this is not the Dalgo. You're probably right. That is a curve. Okay. This is a, a cur And is it considered a crab? It's considered a crab. Okay. How do you What's, tell the zip difference there? The new metal Because he well, picks those are a little bit longer. In you know where white is? Like okay. Uh -huh. Circular. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're different, in, they're different flavors as well. And, and these are like, Delicious. Yeah, They're tart. You could actually like genuinely eat. Yes, yeah. I just yeah, I just nibbled one. Anyone want one? <laughs> um, and then this here is um, this is from the Morris Toll, um, and it's the Winthrop Greening, and you don't see this very often. The Winthrop Greening, and this looks great. There were none last year because of the drought, and this year there's um, Derek Glazier was kind enough to <laughs> gift me a few Winthrop Greenings. The Winthrop Greening. Interestingly enough, um, the Pomological Society came out with a rave review about the Winthrop Greening, and about 10 years later, they said it was subpar yeah. <laughs> because other other apples were more popular. Yeah. So, but it's a cool apple to me. So, so it's still going then? It's still going. The, the, um, Derek Glazier picked these for me from the Morris Toll um, Orchard on, on the Winthrop Center Road. Fedco sells them. Fedco sells them, yes. Yes. Ch uh, check out the Fedco seed catalog because they are. Um, let's see what kind of. Somebody just uh, got a tree. Um, there was a sale at Havana State, wasn't there? Not that I know. No? Okay. Yes. So, all these different types of apples. Yes. What are the owners doing with these apples? Talking to me. <laughs> no, no, they're not selling them. We're 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 tr we're tracking them down. I'm not the only person interested. Um, I have taught John Bunker. Um, Todd Little Siebold is a, a professor at the College of the Atlantic, but he's also an apple nerd. What I refer to as malice absurdum. Malice absurdum in Latin means apple nerd. Um, we are obsessed with apples and trying to find these old varieties. So we literally knock on people's doors and say, can we take a cutting from your tree? But what are, what are they actually doing with all these apples that come off Nothing. the tree? Nothing. Nothing. They're, Nothing. Just, they're in their backyards. Yeah. And they fall off the, the tree. Deer, the, the deer look cute eating them. Okay. The porcupines eat them. Some okay. people actually know, okay, this is a really great apple for apple pie. Um, I have literally knocked on people's doors all up and down um, the case road and said, can I have your apples for my apple cider? Okay. Got it. Right. So. Yeah. And I kind of excited orchard. Some of those apples that go into our cider. So I've been picking some of their apples this year. Right. They're not going to waste. Correct. You can come <laughs> and take them anytime you want. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're frequent customers. We recommend. Yay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Love Absalom. So anyone else? Any other questions? Feel free to come up and, and take a look at some of the. Oh, I brought um, the thing up. Carry on. What do you want to say? Oh, okay. Yes, the trophy. There was a picture that went with it. This one? Yes. Can we pass that around? Is that all right? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so, do you want to come this way? It's part of the collection. So okay. So, and yeah. should be touching it. Yep. Um, so, the Augusta Board of Trade offered by the Pomological Society Best Kennebec Company Fruit Exhibit. And this is this it right is here. Taylor, come on over here. Taylor Witham Farm. Taylor Witham Farm. Almost to Absalom. Which um, is mailbox. And 6. they called it uh, Orchard Slope Farm. Orchard Slope. Oh, okay. And Catherine. That's mailbox 641. Yeah. Catherine, Taylor Witham. Catherine with Witham wrote a wonderful story about her life with her father growing these apple orchards. I mean, apples. So if maybe if you come up closer, you, the, the the display is just amazing. I'll just put it, it in the table. Just amazing. And and this was a big deal, folks, back then to if do something can like ID this. where they are. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. Just, just like apple pie bake offs were a big deal. <laughs> so I'm hoping. Um, thanks everyone who participated in the apple pie bake off. Um, for for you, those of you on the um, zooms again, so that we're on there. There is, if you look at that picture, you'll see this on one of the You want to come over this way? It's yeah. stark. Stark. Oh, stark, stark apples. Stark. Yeah. So um, thank you, everybody. I'm hoping that we'll have an annual apple pie bake-off. Um, thank you, everyone who brought the apple pies. Thank you for those who judged. Thank you for those who ate the apple pie. <laughs> and um, come on up if you want to look through anything. I have a...
interesting way of keeping all my research together. You should come back. Oh, thank you. <laughs>